Hey guys, this is Denny. And this is James from TDB.org. And uh, today we're going to be talking about one more oolong tea. We got another um, twisted oolong tea. This is from both China and Taiwan. Yep. And this is absolutely one of my favorite teas that I've drank um, very recently. And this particular one, like Denny said, you can find this in both China and Taiwan, but this one is from Taiwan. So what's this? What's the uh, name of this uh, tea, James? Yeah, so it's called uh, Baojong or Puchong, and it literally means the wrapped kind. And um, you can see kind of similar to our Wuyi Oolong, which we reviewed last week, um, this one is curled and not rolled into the little balls that we're used to in terms of Oolong tea. So contrary to last week, this week's tea is much less oxidized. Um, it's, you know, James mentioned that it's, it's almost as if it's a green tea. Yep. Uh, and it looks much more like a, your average green tea would. Um, the leaves themselves are a little more bruised and a little bit more purple. But nevertheless, um, it's a much lighter smell. Uh, and I'm, I can't wait to taste this tea. So how much tea did you weigh out here, James? Yeah, so this is um, 5 grams of tea for a 100 milliliter um, gaiwan. And it's a little bit, it might seem like a lot of leaves, but it's actually a little bit less than we used for our wuyi oolong. And the reason being that this tea is a little bit more delicate and light. So um, we want to treat it um, differently as a result. Cool. And again, we're just going to be using slightly under boiling water temperature tea. Uh, water, other, excuse me. Um, and how long are you going to steep this for? Yeah, so the first steep will be for about 30 seconds, and we will adjust from there. Cool. And you'll see that the rinse very, very light, similar to kind of our tea guanine rinse. Almost like a white tea color. And oh my gosh, the vibrance of the color itself, just looking at the rinse, is incredible. <laughs> I cannot wait to taste this, and it, it's got a very rich. Um, uh, floral, sweet, uh, crisp smell already. Um, I'm totally excited. Beautiful looking. One of the most beautiful teas I've seen. So, we're going to do this for 30 seconds. Yep. Cool. Yeah. And so, this tea was acquired um, from a local tea company, but unlike um, the Dong Ding, you can actually get this one online. It's from the Floating Leaves Tea Company. They're an excellent tea company, and they focus on um, what's well, ran by one uh, woman, Shouwen, and they focus on Taiwanese oolong, similar to Seattle's Best. But unlike Seattle's Best, they're more focused on kind of the different varietals, such as Baojong um, or Fo Shou, um, the Buddhist hand uh, in Taiwan. And, you know, I've actually have not been to this, this tea shop yet, but, <clears throat> excuse me, <coughs> James has told me great things. One of my favorite parts about tea is just experiencing tea, and a really great way to do that is to go to tea shops, talk to owners of tea shops, and have them educate you. They're totally knowledgeable, they love it, and they're really excited to meet people that are as into tea as they are. Um, and there's no reason not to show up and say, I don't know anything about tea, but I'm really curious. Teach me. Um, and they'll show you a great time. Usually they'll give you some free tea or, or at least give you a tasting. Yep. Um, and there's n you know, no reason not to just uh, spend a weekend uh, browsing tea shops and having yep. a great time. Oh. You know, even though this is a very delicate flavored tea, the actual flavor itself is very striking. Um, it's not... It's not at all overly bitter, so the wui that we had uh, last week or last episode, it wasn't too bitter, but it was definitely bitter. Um, and this is oh, it's sweet, it's um, maybe a little bit grassy. Yeah, um, you get somewhat of that vegetal filling, and it's a very, this tea is very famous for having a very clean filling in the mouth. Oh, and um, absolutely. I absolutely get that. And I think that this is brewed perfectly. I could easily imagine this tea being overbrewed. Again, this kind of method of tea uh, brewing, if you're going to brew this amount of tea leaves with that hot of water for three minutes, just don't do it. It's, gonna, it, it's not going to ruin the tea, but it's not going to be nearly as delicious. Yeah. It tastes really strong. You're not going to get a lot of that nuance and subtlety and light floralness that we're getting out of this tea right now. Oh, this is wonderful. So <clears throat> how many times can you uh, brew this tea, James? 
Um, you know, uh, lighter teas you tend to not be able to brew for as many times, but I would say this tea you could probably go. It's a very high quality tea, um, for maybe eight times. Nice. Slowly increasing the time, I'd say something by ten or fifteen seconds each steeping. Oh, I could just drink this all day. This is the kind of tea that I would have and and have it by itself without any food, um, and then go and like write somewhere or. Or, oh, maybe this would be really good iced, I bet. Yeah, I bet it would. Definitely for me, an afternoon tea. Um, everyone loves their tea at different times and for different reasons, so go ahead and whatever you like. Um, but this is wonderful. Oh, I'm going to have to go to this tea shop soon. Very cool. Yep. So, um, why did you pick this tea in particular, James? Is there any specific reason? I mean... Well, I mean, for this particular episode, I thought it provided a nice contrast um, versus some of the other teas we've had. The only other ty- tea we had from Taiwan, the Dongding, is a very, very different tea from this in the sense that it's charcoal roasted. It's more of that fruity flavor, and it's much more oxidized than the Baljong. So I thought it provided a really nice contrast compared with the last two roasted teas that we've done. You know, one tip I would say for people that are just getting into tea tasting and trying different types of tea is um, to go ahead and just order small amounts of tea and, and order lots of tea. Yep. Um, why not? You know, it's, it's not very expensive. You're going to realize quickly that you're going to maybe spend a, a little bit of money up front, but it's going to last you for a long time. So you'll order a bunch of different types of tea. You'll like two or three different varieties. And then next time you order, go ahead and just order a whole bunch. Yep. And one thing to note is that for some of these teas that are greener in nature, such as the Baojong or the Tiguanin that we did episode one, they don't keep as well as stuff like the Wu Yulong, which was actually picked in 2011. Um, and some people prefer the taste of those aged, actually. But teas like this... They're get definitely going to lose, they're not going to go bad per se, but they're going to get a little bit more stale and lose a lot of their flavor if you wait too long to drink them. So buying in small quantities, especially for a tea like this, I would absolutely recommend. There's a, <coughs> excuse me, there's a certain crispness and freshness to this tea that is really wonderful, um, yeah. and it definitely is seasonal. So yep. you know, tea is a, is a plant, and like any plant, it, it thrives in certain conditions and certain temperatures, and... Um, conserves energy uh, and doesn't grow as much in other times. So yep. that does affect the flavor. Yep, and this is a winter tea. So like Denny su- suggested, it was it's very, very freshly picked. It was picked in the winter of 2012. So this tea has only been picked two or three months ago, really. Mm. And it's so wonderful. Ugh. I'm, I'm, I'm totally loving this tea. I'm going to have to get some of this. And one thing you could actually do to... Uh, extend the longevity of some teas is to actually roast them yourself. Um, for instance, if you weren't able to finish all of this tea early on, or for some reason you just didn't like the flavors of it, which I can't even imagine for a tea like this, but if that were the case, you can roast it yourself. And how would you go about doing that? We'll probably include some information down the line on tdb.org, but, um, you know, it's really not as complicated as it needs to be. Um, and it can be as simple as uh, using the burners or a candle or something like that to just kind of provide that light roast to allow your tea to age properly. Cool. Excellent. So we're in our third steeping now. How do you think the tea itself has evolved in terms of flavor? You know, I really like that um, second brew. It was a little bit stronger for me than the first one. Definitely. But it was still very light and very delicate, um, and it had... Nice floral aspects to it. I Absolutely. Yeah. yeah, I think that the vegetal aspect of this tea really shined in the beginning, and um, now I'm getting a little bit more of that that floral um, aspect. Yep. There's sort of that crispness um, continuing through through these different um, brewings. One other great thing about this tea is, <clears throat> like James had mentioned, the the mouthfeel of this tea is wonderful. It's 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 thin. It's light. Um, doesn't feel like I'm drinking something thick. You could compare, in, on an extreme view, the, the textural experience of drinking something like milk or soy milk or almond milk versus water. Well, one's a very thick feeling in your mouth, and the other one's much more clean and crisp. But interestingly, all we're doing is just drinking water with tea leaves in it, right? And yet, somehow, there's still that reflection of the actual mouthfeel of this tea. Um, and I, I'm totally loving this. It's, it's very thin, but very full-bodied. And you actually, uh, for this tea, I'm actually getting a little bit stronger, creamy, um, buttery aspects out of it. Mm. Well, this might have to be my favorite to date so far.
Yeah, I think it's an excellent tea. And you guys should all check out uh, The Floating Leaves. Um, Showin is fantastic, and she also provides a great resource in her blog, and I've, I've learned a lot personally from reading her blog and speaking to her in person. Yeah, I mean, one of the coolest parts about local tea shops is that the people that, that are there to um, help you usually own the tea shop. And it's such a cool way to connect with people. Um, just being curious, again, like I mentioned earlier, is a, is a great way to meet people in, in anything that you're doing, um, especially with tea. So uh, go out there, meet people, be excited, um, say you don't know a lot, and just drink a lot of tea. See what you like. Yeah. Um, okay, so James, where can people learn more about this tea? Um, so this tea, you can definitely visit our website at tdb.org and look up kind of a lot about how to brew this tea. Um, where you can buy it, um, kind of what the different history of it is, um, which is all interesting stuff. And you can also um, actually just buy this tea at thefloatingleaves.com, or floatingleaves.com, rather. Um, they run a great website, and uh, and they have a lot of fantastic teas beyond just this one. Great. So this wraps up our fourth um, oolong tea in our little um, intro oolong series. What are we doing next? Yeah, I think we're moving on to Pu'er next, so that's very exciting. Cool. So very different, completely different um, uh, mouthfeel, taste, processing, all the same plant, Camellia sinensis, but uh, stay tuned next time and we'll talk about some Pu'er tea. Yep. Thanks for watching, guys. Cheers.